Welcome to Rams Iconic, presented by 1800 Tequila, the best taste in tequila. Please drink responsibly. I'm DeMarco Farr, and welcome to another episode of Rams Iconic, where we get to chat with some of the greatest players ever to wear the horns, and they are so pretty. My next guest is a four-time Pro Bowler, three-time first-team All-Pro. He was a member of the 1980s NFL's All-Decade Team. And before that, he was a Kansas High School Athlete of the Decade in the 70s. Tell me he didn't have fun. He played his entire 11-year career with the L.A. Rams. His 37 picks, second all-time in franchise history. Sticky hands. He's Hollywood handsome, Dodge City tough. Please welcome former Rams defensive back Nolan Cromwell. What's up, Mr. Cromwell? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, not much. I'm just enjoying retirement and, uh, and you know, having fun. Enjoying my grandkids and and. and just having having great time. My God, look at you! You're still pretty. I love it. You're still <laughs> handsome. Come on, <laughs> eleven uh, years. You're, you're killing me now. <laughs> yeah, you're killing me. That that uh, that saying is uh, is uh, haunted me forever. Which one, Hollywood handsome? It Hollywood fits. Handsome. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you like, Hollywood handsome or Dodge City tough? I think Dodge I think City tough. you like Dodge City tough, don't you? Oh yeah. You I hated the handsome part. That. <laughs> Come oh, on. Man. If it fits, it fits. Hey, 11 years, and I, we have something in common. Tell me if I'm wrong. You've played for only three teams your entire life, high school, college, and pro, right? Correct. Wow. I mean, so with the Rams, building that up, being here, being with the guys, being in the locker room, when I ask you what does it mean to be a Ram, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Uh, togetherness. I, I came uh, in uh, uh, in the seventies, uh, you know, and and I I joined a team that had dominated defensively and were in the I think they had the best defense the last five years in a row. I came in seventy seven and and I joined a team that they did things right. They did they played for each other. I mean, it, it was it was really uh, special uh, for me to come in, and I, I was coming to a team that was very good, and I got a chance to learn the defense uh, before I was thrown into action. So I had Dave Elmendorf and Billy Simpson were the two safeties uh, when I got there, and they took me under their wing and just and told me and showed me and and really explained what. The responsibilities were and how to play the game. You know, I, I think uh, I know one of your teammates, Rod Perry. He yes. was there with you. Yeah, he talks yeah. about you quite a bit. No, I tell you what, Rod and uh, at that time, uh, Rod and, and uh, Monty Jackson were the two uh, corners when I got there my my uh, rookie year with Pat Thomas as uh, the third corner. And in those days, we only kept six DBs on the on the uh, roster. Wow! Uh, it was it was di it was different. It was really different. I think they keep more specialists now <laughs> than six DBs. That's crazy. <laughs> You're exactly right. Oh but, uh, wow! Well, I remember like during my career. I mean. The Rams were down, and we desired to get into the postseason. I mean, we we like damn near killed ourselves to make the postseason, make the playoffs. You were there eight out of eleven seasons. To to yeah. be an LA Ram t on a team that was that good for that long. I mean, what must it have been like for you to play in that era? You know, uh, it, it was special because everybody uh, kind of put their their egos to the side and said, Hey, let's play as a team. And anytime, you know, that happens, even today, you can, I think I can really look out there and watch a team and see how they interact on the sidelines, see how they, they play together and, uh, you know, who's catching it, who's not catching it type of deal. And shoot, uh, we, it didn't matter. All we all we cared about is is winning the game, getting to the playoffs, and then having a chance to to go to the Super Bowl. See, when we were good, I had a teammate named London Fletcher, and he was so yeah. intense. I was intense, and I think we had won 11, 12 games, so we were kind of 
you know, we were feeling it a little bit towards the end of the year. And we almost got into a fist fight on a Friday practice because I smiled. And he was like, what are you smiling about? You know what I mean? Do you have any stories like that with teammates? No. Uh, well, we had a few tussles going on out there, of course. But uh, uh, it, it was nothing like that. I, I think everybody just – and I'm sure, you know – London Fletcher and you and all your team at that time felt that, hey, we're good. We just can't beat ourselves. We just go out and play and do our thing and and perform to the best that we can perform. We're going to win. And I and I really felt that's how we we entered the game every week was that we stepped on the field uh we felt we were going to win it, and if we had to win it uh, seven to nothing or or ten to seven, uh, uh, we we'd do it. See, yeah, see, that was the difference. We we hadn't become a good team. This was just our first year of winning, so I think London was afraid to go back. So he yeah. thought I was taking my foot off the gas a little bit. So that was our little disagreement. So it, 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 for me, when I see eight years going to the postseason out of eleven, I'm like, wow. I would love to be on an, in an era like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you know what? It, it was uh, it was exciting. You know, we went uh, to Super Bowl fourteen and uh, and play, uh, and that was the ultimate for for that se- uh, for that season. And for me, I thought, you know, shoot, we're, we're going to be back in the Super Bowl, no problem. You know, uh, with the team that we had and everything, and and uh, but. When I look back, from 1973 was when Chuck Knox uh, uh, started uh, uh, as a head coach. They were number one or number two in the defense and just went. And for those those years, five or six years, uh, the uh, defense was number one in, or number two in the league. So we kind of felt that we're going to be back in the Super Bowl to just go. But we never did make it. We just didn't, uh, couldn't get over the hump. You guys made the Super Bowl on a nine and seven season. How? You you barely outscored. Every game was tight. How do you guys make the Super Bowl from nine and seven? You know what? Uh, that year, that uh, in the middle of the season, we were we were five and six, and uh, we ended up every offensive lineman. Early in the season, if uh, if I remember correctly, uh, all but one offensive lineman, starting offensive lineman, had surgeries through in the season. We got everybody back at that five and six uh, record, and we went ended up winning the next four in a row. We won, and that uh, solidified our division. And we ended up uh, resting uh, a lot of guys the last game uh, who we we got beat. But we go into it. We won the division with nine and seven. And then we went into the playoffs as strong as we've ever been. And uh, shoot, it just went went crazy. And you beat Dallas. That had to be cool. Yeah. We beat Dallas. You know, it was either the Dallas Cowboys or the Minnesota Vikings back then and the Rams those three teams were in there and one of those three teams was probably going to the Super Bowl and the those the Cowboys or the uh Vikings ended up beating the Rams in all those years on a field goal uh either a field goal block uh a uh some type of specialty team play. Uh so we do this on every show with with every icon we have on the show. I asked them your favorite play. Do you have a favorite play from your career? One that you can remember and describe it. Who was it? What was it? What happened? <laughs> well, probably the one memorable, you know, memorable de- uh, play was worth versus Tampa Bay. I ended up intercepting a, a pass and I'm running down the, the side, uh, the sideline. And all of a sudden, I see the guy coming, and I'm getting ready to make a move to cut back inside. And somebody hit my foot, and it tripped me. So I'm just kind of floating there in the air. <laughs> and 
uh, uh, the running back, the little running back. Uh, gosh, darn, he's from Arkansas, I think. Uh, uh, oh, I, I can't remember his name, but he drilled me right in the ear. And boom. <laughs> The net, and this was this was halfway through the first quarter, and I'm I go uh, I ended up on film. I'm watching my safe self play for a quarter and a half. The next thing I remember was there was six seconds left to go in the half. Wow! They they are on our like five yard line, and they're lining up to kick a field goal. And I have no idea what that, you know, uh, finally, uh, that's kind of when the lights came on and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking around. I played the best quarter and a half of football I ever played in my life from the standpoint of if I would, Johnny Johnson was, uh, was a, a rookie safety along with me. And I'd, I'd be at free safety. I'd be standing back there and I'd go, Johnny, what do I do? <laughs> just cover the tight end. <laughs> just grab him. <laughs> I mean, and it was like a glove. And I made, I, you know, tackles, boom, hit, you know, stand yeah. the guy up, put him on his back. I go, I went, holy smoke. All crazy. on instinct, see? See? All on, all on instinct. <laughs> all on instinct. So, all right, uh, two more. Uh, I got to ask you about Ramit. <laughs> Whose idea? Come on, when you first heard about it, you thought it was a joke, right? Come on. Oh, yeah. Yes. I, you- I, you know, we we got informed of it, I think, uh, like a week before or whatever, and they're going to do it on our day off and everything. And and uh, and I said, you know, of course, I went along with it. But uh, gosh, it's haunted me forever. <laughs> do you remember your line? <laughs> well, I I I think I, <laughs> I think I kind of do. Come uh, on, well, give me well, a piece. It was. Uh, a Hollywood uh, handsome Dodge City tough. You throw it my way, it's going to get rough. Uh, I like to ram it. I like to ram it. As you can see, nobody likes ramming any more than me. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on. I would have skipped church on Sunday after that. Oh, you see, dude. Wow. That's crazy. Wow, wow, wow. I remember when you came to St. Louis in 2010. Uh, yes. I went gaga when I saw you. Yes. I said that is Nolan Blank and Cromwell. <laughs> oh, I, unbelievable! Yeah, how did you it, like coaching? I loved coaching. I tell you, uh, it was. Uh, I really uh, enjoyed uh, my first my first years at Green Bay. I went with Mike Holmgren. We were in Green Bay and uh, in 1992, and uh, I was probably the worst coach ever that year. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, coaching specialty teams and, and, but I got the first year under, under, under my belt. And I, I realized that you've got to learn to get your point across quickly in mm. very few words, bang, tell the guy what, it, what he has to do or what he needs to do and then make everything simple, as simple as you can make it. And uh, I had uh, a, some some better years, you know, the next two or three years. And then when we went to the Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl 31, uh, Desmond Howard uh, was uh, uh, our uh, returner. And uh, I think he had uh, six touchdowns, I think, that year, punt and kickoff returns. And, uh, heck, you know, he ended up uh, being the MVP of the Super Bowl and uh, – that was uh, that was huge for me and and uh, uh, I think for Desmond and, and and our team. I bet Desmond was on fire. Did you teach him that soup, that touchdown celebration dance, whatever? What was that? No, <laughs> hey, that was a Heisman pose. Ah, now the Heisman pose. He did that in college. Wow, wow, that was dope. Yeah, man. Um, I heard this joke from one of your old coaching mates. I think it was Coach Kroom oh. that said, uh, "What do you call?" A big eight quarterback in the NFL, a big eight wishbone quarterback in the NFL. Nolan Cromwell, <laughs> no doubt, oh, no geez. doubt. Well, it was, you know, I I was like I said, very fortunate when I went to the Rams and and I played uh, as as you said the quarterback of my last two years in college. And uh, I played uh, safety my freshman and sophomore year, and then. Uh, but when I got to the Rams, I, I wasn't thrusted in 
uh, in there. I was like, I was the second pick in the, in the, in the second yeah. round. Um, but, uh, I didn't, I wasn't thrown in there. They told me I would start my third year and, and you uh, did. it's exactly, it's exactly what happened. Look at you. Well, look, uh, I'll go with Hollywood handsome because you are handsome, <laughs> but you are Dodge City's up, man. Well, Nolan Cromwell, thank you for joining us on Rams iconic. This was special. Thank you so much, Marco. And that's a wrap on this episode of Rams Iconic presented by 1800 Tequila, the best taste in tequila. Please drink responsibly. Hope you enjoyed our conversation with Rams legend Nolan Cromwell. I'm DeMarco Farr, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on our videos.